Hey everyone. So tonight I'm doing a video on GNOME Sequencer and we're going to start off by going to a WoW interface to get the GNOME Sequencer add-on for World of Warcraft. You can also go to another site, curse.com to get uh, World of Warcraft uh, macros. So we're going to type in the search bar. No, we're going to type in GNOME. We don't have to type in the full term GNOME Sequencer because it will find GNOME Sequencer at the very top. So depending on when you do your search, it may or may not, if there's a new GNOME Sequencer, it might you might not see this quite order. But here's GNOME Sequencer Enhanced. This is a new version of GNOME Sequencer that you can do in game instead of out of game. This is a GNOME Sequencer I'm going to show you right now. This is kind of old school GNOME Sequencer. This is the new hotness and you can see that the date is very recent where the date on this one is not. So let's go take a look at GNOME Sequencer. I can do GNOME Sequencer Enhanced another time. So here it is. Here's the info about it. So GNOME Sequencer. This is a small add-on that allows you to create sequence of macros to be executed at the bush of a button. Like a cast sequence macro, it cycles through a series of commands when the button is pushed. However, unlike cast sequence, it uses macro text for the commands instead of spells and it advances every time the button is pushed instead of stopping when it cast, can't cast something. This means if a spell is on cooldown and you push the button, it will continue to the next item on the list with each press until it reaches the end and starts over. When you first install the add-on, you will need to rename example sequence.lua to sequences.lua and open the file in a text editor to add your own sequences. The sequence file contains a couple examples to get you started writing your own sequence. I'll post this in this entirely here. So this is kind of what it's going to look like before you start adding in your own sequences. I wouldn't necessarily worry about this. If you want to look at it, that's fine, but I'm not even going to talk about it. So here's your download button right here. This is not like CNET where you have a bunch of clickbait download buttons and you don't know which one's going to download whatever you came to CNET for. This is very easy. So you're going to download this and whether you got a Mac or a PC, whatever browser you're using, however its download is going to be a little different. And you're going to need to get that file, open it and click on extract. So this is Chrome, download. We get the zip here, click on it, and then we see we have the ability to extract all. And we got to pick a folder location. So I'm going to close this and show you the folder location right here. So this is it. Um, so you're going to go in your hard drive into Program Files, World of Warcraft, Interface, and Add-ons. And then in there you will find a coder folder called GNOME Sequencer. As you see here I also have GNOME Sequencer Enhanced but we're just going to look at GNOME Sequencer. So you're going to open that up and you should see these first uh, four files here. Core, Error Handler, Example Sequences, Lua, and GNOME Sequencer.talk. So we're going to take Example Sequences and you can either rename it or you can just copy it and then you take the copy and you rename it sequences.lua like I've done here. Now as you see here this is suggesting that it does not know what file type this is. And if unless you already have a text editor that can open this, you're going to need to get one online and download it. So what I already have here for you is a text editor called Notepad++. It's free. So you do a search in Google for it. It has Mac Windows versions. Uh, you want to get the Notepad++, this one's the one you want. Don't touch the, the CNET one because there's just clickbait buttons galore. I hate you CNET, you blow big time. Then you get to here, Notepad++, here's your download. Wow, that's easy. No clickbait, just download it and install. And then you have uh, Notepad++. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to take um, you're going to want to take the sequences and you can't just launch it because it still doesn't have a, a text editor set for for the Lua file type. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to like you're going to left mouse click this and grab it and drag it on top of uh, your Notepad plus plus icon on your computer, and it'll launch it up like this. So you're going to first see these uh, lines, these examples, and test stuff. Uh, you know, don't touch this stuff; just leave it alone. And we're going to pass by all this, and here is where the money shot is. Here is where the sequences you're going to use exist. So we're going to create two sequences, one for RET S that represents RET single target attack, and this sequ sequence represents RET A, which is RET AOE damage. So inside of this sequence, we have a pre-macro target enemy and then we're going to cast Avenging Wrath and down here in post macro we're going to use in combat item number 11 in our equipment so that's on your character the equipment items is what you have equipped in your your armory in game so basically item number 11 is your ring slot your first ring slot if this were combat 12 it would be uh, your second ring slot Combat 13 would be your first trinket, and Combat 14 would represent your fourth trinket. So if you have multiple rings that are have on use or multiple trinkets that are on use, then you're going to want to add additional use combats like, you know, use, and then we're going to do combat, and then, uh, you know, let's say your second trinket is... Uh, is is has an on use and that's what you're going to do and then you're going to save the file now you can add all the different equipment spaces that can have an on use item like uh your rings your trinkets you can add all those in here so i could do uh i could do four different lines here i could have use combat 11 use combat 12 you know, use combat 13, use combat 14, and it will be okay because this kind of macro, it's not going to get stuck if you don't have an item that's uh, available to be used in that, in that slot. It'll just pass it over and go on to the next thing. So that's up to you to decide. I just leave it like this. You know, if I get an, uh, an extra on-use item, if the weapon slot should become an on-use item, then I'm going to add that too. I think the weapon slot, the first the weapon, first item in your weapon slot, it might be combat 15, and then the offhand might be combat 16, but don't quote me on that. All right, so we've blown Avenging. So Avenging Wrath first, your on-use item, start attack, start attack. Then we're going to start going through uh, your abilities. So the first thing we're going to do is it's going to cast after it's done Avenging Wrath and your whatever is in your equipment slots. It's going to start using your abilities. So that's where you're putting these cast items. And you're going to put one item at a time. And the first time we're doing is Crusader Strike. Crusader Strike is going to uh, generate one holy power. We want to do that first. We could do Blade of Wrath first if we want, but we're just going to do Crusader Strike is the first item we're going to do. Then we're going to do a cast for Blade of Wrath, which will generate two holy power, which will create three holy power for us. Now, Blade of Wrath, if you haven't selected Blade of Wrath, let's take a quick look at this calculator. So this is what my town tree is. Here's Blade of Wrath. If you have Virtue's Blade, then you want to put in Blade of Justice instead of Blade of Wrath. If you have Divine Hammer, then I think you're, you you got to put in Divine Hammer. But I'm not sure if that's exactly what it's called. You're going to have to check it out in game to make sure. So, Blade of Wrath, Blade of Justice, Justice Divine Hammer, whatever. They all generate two Holy Power. Then the next item in my cast is the Judgment. I put Judgment here because Judgment buffs puts a dot on your target that buffs your next holy power spender by X amount of damage. And your next holy power uh, spender would be 
Justicar's Vengeance. Now, Justicar's Vengeance is only available under two circumstances. One, if you have hit five holy power, because it costs five holy power for Justicar's Vengeance to trigger, or if you have divine purpose picked in your last town, last item in your town tree, and divine purpose procs. So let's take a quick look at that. All right, divine purpose. Passive, your holy power spending abilities have a 20% chance to make your next holy power spending ability free. So when this procs, that Justicar's Vengeance becomes free. And then after that is Templar's Verdict. So if you go through Crusader Strike, Blade of Wrath, you got three holy power. You get a judgment to buff your holy power spender. You don't have five holy power and you don't get just, to, just or you don't get... Um, divine purpose then Templar's Verdict will fire off and it will spend that holy power and you'll go back to the top of your your list it'll look to see if Avenging Wrath is available is your on use item that you have equipped available then uh, excuse me didn't mean I just burped I burped again sorry <laughs> why did you tell okay I just wanted to let you know what that noise was sorry not doing it on purpose just blessed very gassy um, so anyway then it'll go back to Crusader Strike and it'll work its way down here so these don't all light up Crusader Strike has a different cooldown from Blade of Wrath from Judgment and these have no cooldowns these can always these are instants they can happen anytime when you have Holy Power or you get Divine Purpose proc so this can happen in any order it could happen that you you get back to the top and Crusader Strike is on cooldown. So it'll go do Blade of Wrath. If Blade of Wrath is on cooldown, it'll go to Judgment. And if that's on cooldown, then it'll go Justicars, Templars, and then back to the top, check to Avenging Wrath. Is Avenging Wrath available? Is your on-use item available? Yada, yada. And so on and so forth. Now, this makes for a less than perfect and not, you know... This isn't like something a Mythic Raider is going to do. Mythic Raider is going to write their own macros. And they're going to be watching what's proccing to, to decide what's their next ability that they have available that they're going to use. This is just an easy macro you and I can use that's going to do decent damage. But it's not without its own flaws. You know. Okay, so let's go on the next ret uh, sequence. This is Ret A. This stands for AOE. So target enemy. Avenging Wrath first, Combat 11, because I have my ring that's on use. And then it's going to go Crusader Strike, Blade of Wrath, Judgment, and then Divine Storm. So you're not going to see Jessica's Vengeance or Templar's Verdict there, because this is AoE. We want Divine Storm. So if Divine Purpose triggers, which means my next spender on, on this sequence, when I'm using this one, this macro, Divine Storm will be cast and it'll be free. It it won't have it won't cast any of these. I'm not gonna put these on my AoE because I want AoE damage. I don't care about Templar's Verdict. I care about Divine Storm. I don't care about Justicar's Vengeance. I care about Divine Storm. I want that to be triggered because I got lots of enemies and that's why I'm gonna do it. Okay, so something else I gotta point out. So the way that these casts are set up is it's kind of like programming code Th this very first these very first quotes these single quote and double quotes like represent the beginning of what's telling as like a string of information a string of character string string of whatever information within these quotes so what's going to happen is when the cast sequence sees this it's going to first think Okay, so this is a string of information I'm looking for. We're looking to see what's going on next. And then it's it sees uh, Justicar's Vengeance. It goes through to the end, and then it's noticed that the end of this string. Now, there's a problem with using this single quote on this uh, cast sequence. Is we have this uh, Justicar's Vengeance with an uh, apostrophe S. So if we did something like this, if we continued with this single quote kind of formatting here, what's going to happen is 
it's going to see this first quote. It's going to think, okay, there's some information here I need to I need to do. Know what I'm doing with. This is a group of information that's working together. Uh, uh, string of information. And it's going to hit this apostrophe S. And then it's going to think that this is the end of the line of this information. And then it's going to break because you're going to have this stuff hanging out there. And it's not properly formatted because you got this double quote and, and this this stuff is just like this is garbage text that is going to break your uh, your code so this has got a anytime you get um, a ability that has apostrophe anywhere in it like this has you gotta wrap this thing in double quotes and then you gotta make sure you watch out for stuff like where uh, like uh, Notepad++ gave me the extra uh, double quote after I added the first one. Make sure you really re remove that. So I could have made these all double quotes if I wanted to. I don't know why I made these single quotes. That's making it a little. That's making it a little bit more, but it forces me also to explain to you. So when you're doing this, if you make a mistake, if you decide oh, I'm going to write this hall, I'm going to look at what he's done and then I'm going to write it myself because. I learned by writing and not by just copy paste. You gotta watch for this because this is gonna trip you up. Just like forgetting to put this backslash in front of target enemy or front of the cast, that's gonna mess you up. So enjoy debugging this if uh, you don't copy and paste. Uh, all right, so this is something I've written myself, kind of came up with myself for how I'm going to uh, do single target and AOE damage. It's very simple. It uses all my abilities. It's not perfectly optimized, but it, it does very well. So there is a website called wildlazymacros.com and these are macros targeted for like gnome sequencer like I have. We're gonna look for paladins. We're gonna go look for retribution. And then we have all these posts by these dudes and you can see that these are very recent, very recent posts. So if we went into like the first one, here's one of the first ones. Uh, kind of looking through what this guy is posting and what he's using Gnome Sequencer. He's talking about his talents, or they are talking about their talents. Um, so they're going one one three one two one one. So in the talent, talent calculator, it's yeah, it's one one three. So one one three. And then one two one one. So one two one one. Yeah. So this person is using Virtue's Blade, Eye for an Eye, Divine Invention, and Divine Purpose. So they don't have Just Guard's Vengeance, and they don't have Blade of Wrath. And you're going to see that here because they have Blade of Justice instead of Blade of Wrath, like me. And they have no Jessica's uh, vengeance in this macro. So if you're interested in my talent, if you're going to copy what I'm doing, this is not a good macro. But you could still look at it to see, you know, if you decide that oh, I'm going to try some different things. I want to see what Virtue's Blade does. Then this is probably a pretty good macro for you to kind of try out. Now here's another one right here. So this dude is very similar to me. They're doing one three one two one one one. So one three one, and then uh, one two one one. One two one one. No, is that right? No, is that right? No, I got two one one one. So one one <laughs> one three one. One, three, one, and then two, two, one, one, one. So they're doing the same thing as me. They just got divine intervention, so it doesn't matter. So they sell Blade of Wrath. They got Just Cards of Vengeance, Divine Purpose. So it's a good match. Um, so this is a decent macro. What I would do is they got some author information about them just just throw this stuff out. You don't have to copy this if you don't want. What you want is you want the sequences here. This name is a little bit long. I'm going to show you why 
you don't want to go with such a long name because when you create the macro in game and you put it in your bar you're only going to see the first four letters so when you put this macro in even if you pick different icons for your macro you're going to see OS underscore R on both of them you're not going to you maybe you won't remember which one is single target and which one's AOE and that's annoying so you're going to grab this amount and then you're going to go down here and grab all this stuff all this goodness so let's take a look at what they're doing so they got target enemy avenging wrath uh, combat 13 combat 14 so whether or not this person has a trinket that has an on use they've included it here they probably should have included on use 11 and on uh, use 12 combat for their two rings because uh, as I said even if you don't have an on use the macro is just gonna go through these there's gonna be no on use for these and it's just gonna go to the next item and then go back to the top of the list so this isn't gonna break it even if you don't have and on use for your trinkets that's fine it'll be cool or on use for your rings either so it starts out crusader strike blade of wrath and then they and then they got um, a judgment actually let me i'm gonna refresh this place i i was messing around with this page i was i was messing around with the html so refresh it so they start with crusader strike blade of wrath and then for some reason they do crusader strike again you don't need to do this you just need Crusader Strike, Blade of Wrath, then go straight to Judgment, then Justicar's Vengeance, Templar's Verdict, and then they got Wake of Ashes, and I'm sure that's Cru that's Ashbringer. That's the legendary uh, item that you're going to get once Legion drops. And the cool thing is, this isn't going to hurt your macro. You can leave this in there, you know, getting ready for when you get your Ashbringer and when you get this ability that you can cast. So it will be already there and ready to use once you've selected this ability. So, so it's just like preemptive code that you can just forget and know that later it will be cool. Like your, It's like these uses where or not your uh, trinkets or rings have any on uses. It's there just in case when you do get it. So that's cool. So this is, uh, yeah, this is pretty good. This guy's thinking a little bit forward, or this gal. This person's thinking a little bit forward of me, aside from I don't think you need to have Crusader Strike again. I think you're just getting one Holy Power plus two Holy Power to equal three Holy Power. Judgment to uh, put a dot on the ad to increase the damage of your Holy Power Spenders, which is Jessica's Vengeance, Templar's Verdict, and then Divine Storm. All right, so I think that covers everything I wanted to show you here, and we're going to go into the game, and we'll do a little, I'll show you how to create the macro, and then we'll do some work on the dummy real quick and wrap it up. It's getting late. All right, so you're in your screen, you see your character, there's this little button in the bottom left called add-ons. You need to go there and you know check gnome sequencer and not only that but you have to check load out of date add-ons because this add-on is out of date so it's not gonna load so do this and then you'll be good all right here we go where my de where my my garrison so I'm going to put a little buffs on myself. I already got a flash left over. I'm going to yeah, do a rune. Yeah, don't need to do that one. And then I'm going to give myself a self buff of greater blessing of might for additional damage to me. Uh, just a 411. I watched a video where uh, Mythic Rating Retribution Paladin said that their retribution paladins are giving greater blessing of might to warlocks so just thought I'd share that with you so here we are getting ready to go pew pew uh, just to show you my armory in game I got four set I've re-enchanted some of my items from mastery to haste to try to get my haste up a little bit but I don't think I'm gonna go fully on crazy go nuts trying to get haste up as high as I can get it 
I know in an earlier video I had mentioned that that people should be sorry again about the uh, the burping man I don't know I must swallow too much air or something so I know I had said in a previous video that you should be going for mastery crit and haste last and from what I've learned and I believe I understand now is you want to go haste first and you want to get it to 30 percent and that's because of uh, your judgment your judgment has a 10 second cooldown but when you judge you put a dot on your target and for eight seconds they take they take additional damage from your holy power spenders not only that but it also hits two additional targets who also get a judgment on them so they can take damage from like uh, a spender if you should change your target for some reason or if you use an AOE holy power spender like divine storm so that's cool but you know with this gear and the fact that I haven't kept any of the other gear items I've gotten I've got all these items, they are geared to mastery. There's just no way I'm going to get this haste up to 30% before, you know, we start leveling up for Legion and get to 110. So for right now, you're just going to see me with mastery, create haste, and just accept the fact that, you know, I'm never, I'm not going to be able to get my haste high enough to test to see if that's really as good as they're suggesting that it is. All right, there's my ring. It's equipped, so it's uh, cast combat 11. This is combat, cast combat 12, cast combat 13, cast combat 14, and I'm suggesting this is cast combat 15. And if this were here and it had a use, it'd be cast combat 16. If I'm correct, I could be wrong about these two, but I'm dead on spot on about these. All right, so we're gonna blow red ass. Ooh. I forgot to show you how to do the macro. Okay, so I'm hitting the SK the the ESC ESC key on my keyboard to bring up the game menu. We're gonna click on macros. You can do your macros in either general or in your specific ones. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click new and you're gonna write in the name of that macro that we had in uh, the sequence, the sequence name. So ret s for the single or ret a we're writing in exactly uppercase lowercase exactly the way it's done then we're going to select like um you know select this for its icon do okay now i had believed at one time it would auto fill in the hashtag click uh you know the name of the macro from gnome sequencer but for some reason it's not doing it so this is what it should like when it look like when it's done so if you get the same thing I'm seeing here when you create your macro this is what you're gonna wanna type in so you're gonna type in hashtag tooltip and then slash click with a space in between the name of the macro ret a or ret s and then you click save and then you got it and then you like drag that to your your uh, bar but I'm not going to uh, I don't want to save this one I've already done it we'll just delete it so here's red s I've already got that on my toolbar right there so that's good oops <laughs> and then red a is already on my toolbar right down there all right close that up all right let's get some damage done on this dummy so what you're gonna see is you're gonna see Thrasis gets cast, Avenging Wrath gets cast, and then it's going to cycle through uh, these abilities, and it might get messed up right away. My, the way I want it to work is it should go, starting out should be like Crusader Strike, Blade of Wrath, Judgment, and then Justicars or Templars for single, depending on if uh, Divine Purpose procs before that or not. But it will probably get messed up right away. But the cool thing is you say, oh, that doesn't sound great. Well, the damage is still decent. It's still pretty good. This whole macro is just to give you something easy that will cycle through your cooldowns. It's not optimized, but it's pretty decent damage still, regardless. And don't forget that we've all, uh, in case you didn't know, most raid buffs 
and self buffs are gone. Uh, Retribution Paladins are one of the few classes that have buffs that I can actually give out to individual players, but I cannot give out Kings to the Raid or Might to the Raid or Wizen Raid. I can give that to an individual player, and that's that. All right. I think we've covered everything. Let's do it. Watch my combat log. This is about to get crazy. Everything got pops. There we go. Judgment. Okay. All right. Went pretty well. We got three holy power. Proccing the right item. Yep. Templar's, Templar's verdict is getting popped. Oh, we got up to five holy power there. We didn't want it to get up to five holy power, but as I said, that's the problem with this macro. Sometimes it's going to go, it's going to fill up your holy power bar, and then it's going to pop, you know, just a card's vengeance. And you don't want just a card's vengeance going off. Unless you get divine purpose proc. Yeah. Oh, well, you're not going to be able to see it unless I stop clicking. So I'm just going to keep going through this for a little while. We'll keep doing more damage. Uh, the damage is really good when you start off. But, of course, it drops a little bit as we get going. And you see there for a little while the holy power was... Uh, was at five and it wasn't getting spent because it had to go through all the rotation of the holy power building abilities like you know crusader strike or blaze of wrath or the non holy power building ability of judgment that buffs damage for holy power spenders it's just the way this kind of goes so we're we almost have uh our ring off its cooldown and Avenging Wrath off cooldown, so I'm going to keep going so you can see that those are going to pop okay just fine. Just fine and dandy. And again, there's no problems. There's no issues. You're not getting the issue you get with a cast sequence when if something's not available in your cast sequence, it just stops. Completely stops. Alright, here we go. Everything goes off again. Lots of damage. Yep. Just one button macro. Just spamming that red S. Just non-stop. Yeah, my finger hurts. But, eh. Alright, I think we're just about done. Alright, let's stop. I'm going to move over here so uh, I can get out of combat. We can look at combat log. Or at, uh... Look at Scotta. Scotta looks okay. Interesting. So, Judgment it was at top. Templar's Verdict, Justicar's Vengeance. They're all very close. So, I've spent a little bit of time on the dummy, and I see different things popping up at top. So, I'll see Justicar's Vengeance first, then Templar's Verdict, and then Judgment followed by Crusader Strike blade of wrath but here I'm seeing something a little bit different it's it's just not perfect but still um that's not bad 50 55 K damage is not bad at all for just having a one button macro that that's all it does is is it just cycles through your abilities see which one you know is available that's on your list and and pops it use it and keeps going so I don't know if there's a better way of trying to set it up. I think it's just it's just simple. I mean, you could try putting Templar's Verdict after each one of these uh, abilities in the cast sequence, or not the cast sequence, but just in the cast. You know, like cast Crusader Strike, and then do cast Templar's Verdict, and then cast Blade of Wrath, and then cast Templar's Verdict, and then cast Judgment, and then cast... Templar's Verdict, and then cast Judge of Cards Vengeance, and then cast Templar's Verdict. You know, you could try different things like that where you, uh, you know, uh, take one ability that you think might be having a problem with, um, with the rotation, and sometimes it's skipping over it. I'm not sure exactly why, what it is that happened. It could just be that the macro is not perfect, and that 
like anything that's programming, it's going to have bugs. Every once in a while, it's going to act in a way that you're not expecting when it, when it should be, when everything is right and you haven't changed anything. It's just life. All right, let's take a quick look here at Retribution A. This is AoE. So all this is going to do is it's going to go through my rotation and then it's Divine Storm. So whether I get um, Divine Purpose you know, your holy power spending abilities have a 20% chance to make an ex-holy power spending ability free, which would make, you know, any of these free. It's just going to be focused on Divine Storm because I did not add Templar's Verdict or Jessica's Vengeance. I recommend to you, don't add Jessica's Vengeance because you see that all it does here is it does damage. It does damage to a single target. It doesn't do multiple targets. So it's not worth putting Justicar's Vengeance in there. Again, Templar's Verdict is single target too. This is your AoE. So if you're doing your rotation, you're working on ret you're working on single target on the boss. The boss summons adds. So you switch over to Red S, and all it does is it just focuses on the same thing: Crusader Strike, Blade of Wrath, get five ho or get three Holy Power. Uh, yeah, I know, I just said five, three Holy Power. Do a Judgment buff your next ho holy power spender which will be divine storm pop that if you get divine purpose pop it for free and and then when ads are done then you go back to red s your single target so okay so red a pop everything going through it and it's it'll be seamless between clicking uh, one button macro for the red single target and then click in red A. You will not experience any problems. It won't suddenly stop working for you. It'll it'll take the transition just fine. What it'll most likely do is once you uh, like if you're clicking red red uh, single target the red S one and you've already done um, like a crusader strike when you click on red A it'll because Crusader Strike is the first of your main abilities aside from Avenging Wrath and your uh, on-use um, trinket or ring, it'll retry to attempt to do Judgment again. Because it's, it's, it's a new macro, it's going to start from the top of its macro, and that's the way it's going to work. And that's the way it's going to work when you change targets. So if there's only two targets and I decide to change from the one target, and I just did a Crusader Strike and I change my targets, it should treat that next target as if it were a brand new target, as if you are just trying to start using the, the macro for its first time and it'll start at the very top. All right, let's just stop there. That's enough. Get out of combat so we can look at combat logs. Looks decent. Looks okay. I'm going to take a real quick look here. So, okay, so this was one minute less. So this is this is our single target damage. And this is AoE damage. Pretty decent. To show you, I have other training dummies I've done. So uh, I think this one is single target. No, no, that's, no, that's, okay, that's when I did AoE. This one, I think, is single target. Yeah. Templar's Verdict, Justicar's Vengeance, and then Judgment. And I go down here, see what this does. Okay, that's the AoE again. There you go, Judgment at the top, Crusader Strike, and then Divine Storm. Justicar's Vengeance at the top, Templar's Verdict, Judgment. So, yeah, it it's never going to be consistently the same but the damage as you can see it's all very similar in terms of how much damage they're all in the 50 somewhere so it's consistent it, it may be different item is at the top of the list for your top damage ability but overall the damage is consistent so that's what it's got going for you it's going to be at least consistent um all right, yeah, man. I want to uh, talk to you about um, this guy's site for uh, retribution, uh, 
give me a second. So this, there's this guy. He's uh, his YouTube channel is called Feet Gaming, and I'll show it to you in just a second. So hold on. All right, where are you? Why are you coming up with PewDiePie? What the hell? Ah. Sorry, this shouldn't be taking so long. There he is. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna turn him off. There he is. Feet gaming. So, I went to this dude's site uh, a couple of nights ago after doing my last retribution video and started watching all of his videos. This guy is a mythic raiding retribution paladin, and his content's very updated. Like this is one day ago, three days ago, three. So here's like information on Retribution Paladins and he keeps it updated and the cool thing is you know even though this guy is doing really good theory crafting and stuff and I think that he's very well informed he also is watching for when something changes and trying to bring it to the community so everyone knows that oh hey um, I was wrong about something it's, you know there's something that's a little bit different I was I you know either I said something wrong or somebody pointed out to me something that all of a sudden I discovered yeah this is the this is right this is I need to change an update so I mean this is something you're gonna find with people who do like videos like what I'm doing is as much as I want to be informed I don't know everything I'm finding out stuff all the time no matter how well heck I can't even spell paladin the god uh, all right so that's his website and I recommend you go over there if you want to know more in depth about Retribution Paladins if you want to be more serious than I am um, you know I want to do decent damage but I don't know what it is it's just there's just so many abilities to have to keep track of it's so very hard for me to uh, do decent damage and paying attention um, you know I'm a I'm a holy paladin I'm mostly focused on healing and it just seems like the transition between you know clicking on clicking on someone's nameplate and throwing them a heal is so much different than trying to pay attention to a rotation that you're trying to uh, maximize and optimize and everything eyesed Alright, so, alright, almost 45 minutes. Not too bad. I think that I am going to keep this, uh, I think that'll be it for right now. I can't think of anything else. I'm probably forgetting something I wanted to talk about. So I think what my plan is going to be is I'm going to do some videos talking about my add-ons. And more than just talking about add-ons, but showing you how they work. So, class timer is the atom that I was using to track um, divine purpose so I have a custom timer I had to add because it's not added as part of the regular timer so I can watch for when that procs and then I would know that it's time to pump just cars vengeance but of course with this uh, macro I don't have to worry about that well let's just say that it's not perfect it's not a perfect experience you know I'm sometimes divine purpose is going to pop and I'm going to you know I'm going to end up doing Templar's you know verdict instead of Justicar's Vengeance that's kind of the trade-off for one button macros click click is just uh, an add-on that I use to bind various abilities this is mostly for healing I don't have any click for for my retribution this is everything I would do for for healing so all my buttons clicks are all bound so when I'm healing the raid 
I know what the button click is going to to be and what ability is going to be cast. Usually. Usually I'm pretty spot on. Grid grid is just this, you know, this step guy, this this um you know, this little square box here that you see kind of hovering in the middle of nowhere. That's grid that's uh raid frames. New combo bar. That's my holy power. So that's basically right here. That's these five items. You probably saw them while I was working on the dummy. So I'm watching those and when I see it hit three then I'm going to try Templar's Verdict unless I get Divine Purpose and then I'm going to pump Justicar's Vengeance. Or if I'm AoE I'm going to pump Divine Storm. Quartz is just, Quartz is just a cast bar like this. I just like it better than the cast bar that's default. Skata is the damage meter. Tom Tom is just, you know, Tom 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 is Tom Tom. It has really very little to do with what I'm trying to talk about right now. All right. So I think that's that's it. Yeah, 46 minutes. All right. So I hope this has helped you out. And, you know, 